Yesterday was a bit of an eventful day. I, uh, I shaved. We saw the new Star Wars movie. And when we went to the Star Wars movie, I was like, a really good snack to take into a Star Wars movie to smuggle into. Because, like, I mean, nobody's buying the snacks, right? Like, you're just smuggling the snacks in. But I figured a really good snack to smuggle in would be Cheerios, because I haven't had Cheerios in a really long time. But now we've got a lot of leftover Cheerios, which is okay, because I got a pack mule situation over here. <laughs> you, can just, you can just get Cheerios from up in there. And I'm thinking, if people want to do that, like on the train and stuff, they want to see, if they, if they see me snacking and they want to snack, I think it's all right. Like, you can share it with the people. <laughs> How you feel about that? You're just sharing, <laughs> people are going to be grabbing in my hood for some Cheerios. <laughs> <laughs> they could just have yeah. the leftovers that are falling out of your mouth. <laughs> it's hard to get all the Cheerios in your mouth and then keep them there. <laughs> There's some pigeons, you can feed some pigeons. There are some pigeons. You want to give, do you think they like Cheerios? Everybody likes Cheerios. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we get. Hey, my, they don't see me do it. No. <laughs> I haven't mentioned it much, but back in the day, I came here with my mom and we went on a tour of the Tower of London and it was fantastic. The warders here are fantastic. They're hilarious and they do some of the best tours probably in the world. And we just started ours and it's already off to a good start. We're talking about prisoners, we're talking about drop bridges, of spikes and stuff, and the guys hyping the crowd. We're having a good time so far. The yeoman warders live and work here in the tower and I don't know if they have a zeal for history or if they're born into something that makes this in their blood where they want to give tours that are theatrical and interesting but of the two that I've been to they were both really really good and you feel as though the person that's doing that tour embodies this place and I guess when you live here you kind of might have an attachment. Um, the Tower of London is an amazing place just to walk around, uh, but I wanted to show off one of my favorite things that I've started to learn about um, fortresses and um, what's the word I'm looking for is uh, terror. <laughs> when you want people to stay away, just put faces of really creepy guys out there. The Vasa had that on there when we were in Stockholm and here they've just got these really creepy faces and that's one of my favorite architectures of terror. <laughs> that's why she keeps me around. <laughs> Turns out that the yeoman warriors, there's only 30 warriors. <laughs> I think they'd be okay with that. It turns out that the yeoman warders, there's only 37 of them that live here in the Tower of London, which makes that a very small population. And I got to bother two of them, one with an amazing mustache and the other with an amazing beard. So the facial hair game here at the Tower of London, pretty darn good. Uh, the question that I asked them was how you become a warder and the guy said that any branch of service here once you've been in service for 22 years and a few other things you can apply to become a warder so this isn't necessarily something that people decide they want to do at the start of joining the armed forces it's something that they get the possibility to do that once they've reached a certain level also what is intriguing is that they live here and I thought that they in my mind I thought this was like a vow of celibacy. Seriously, I feel very stupid. But their families also live here as well. Um, I don't know why I thought they were all just living here single. But uh, yeah, their families get to live inside the Tower of London too. We may not have been clear yet on exactly what the Tower of London is. And back in the day, it essentially functioned as the Castle of London. They call it a tower because back in the day, you don't have to have a really tall building to make a tower out of it. And they do have a somewhat tall building inside of it by ancient standards I'm sure. Um, so the structure has got a couple sets of exterior walls and um, what were the, the, they had this word for the gates that came down with the spikes drop on them? Bridge, or drop, drop, something drop. Drop, drop gate, gate. Dro drop yeah. gates and stuff. With spikes. Like, yeah, with spikes and they still function. They, he said they weigh like a ton or something like that. Yeah, and, and I, when, I, I, felt, I felt fearful to stand underneath Yeah, them. when you walk under it, you're just like, 
Oh my god. <laughs> There's almost like a little village in here as well and this is back in the day where the royal families would live and they had essentially like a little town that like was built up around here. They got a moat that isn't there anymore because it got funky apparently because they used it as like a sewage system essentially and like it People seemed be dying. the way the dude talked about it it was dank and pretty un unclean and they just flushed it all into the Thames every day when the tide came in and out but at some point they were like we're gonna plumb this thing up I think and like, <laughs> probably probably a pretty good situation all I saw was a big plum when you said plum <laughs> plum <laughs> they were just gonna plumb it up they just threw a plum in there and that didn't fix it <laughs> And um, it actually, they've got a building as well that holds the royal jewels. And you can go in there and you can see like crowns and things like that. And, and, and they've been holding stuff in there for a really long time. This yeah. has been the holding spot for it for hundreds of years. Yeah, and it's been a while since I believe a royal family has actually resided here, but I think it's still considered like... 1600s, I think th I think said. the way he talked about it, it was still like where they live, but not where they reside or something mm. like that. He used some sort of word like that made it sound like this is still like where the, the queen's house is still here, but she actually doesn't live here. Like Shit's it was some sort of thing like that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> They probably got out of here. They were like, man, until they get the plumbing finished, we're going to go someplace else. There's and then they just never came back. <laughs> um, and of note, like right behind us, there is a little spot where they had done a few executions. And uh, most of the executions would take place outside of the um, the, the tower walls. On Tower Hill? On Tower Hill. Tr in Trinity, Trinity Park? Park Trinity or Park something? or something? Yeah, like, like yeah. it was a little bit out outside of here. And um, they would use this area as the place to keep the prisoners. They'd take them outside of the walls. They'd kill them in front of all of these people. And he said like huge, huge crowds would come to watch it. And then they'd bring the body back in here. But there were a few private executions that were done just right behind us. Would and you, you mention? Would you go to the big ones? Would I have gone? No, I don't want. I, I mean, now I would never go watch somebody die. No, I'm now. talking about then. Back think, in the day, I don't know. There's no TV, nothing to do. Yeah, he said <laughs> there was nothing to do, and everybody was going. Would you go? Oh yeah, I'd go. Well, you'd go now. Yeah, I'd go now. <laughs> So, Although I never watched any of those beheading videos that you can watch. Oh yeah, from no, like dude, that. not so, okay. Hmm, maybe. Yeah. But I mean, if there was nothing to do, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the, the little Sorry. execution spot that's right behind us is where um, some people had been killed that were like too high profile to be killed publicly, I suppose. Queens. And like he said, like three queens had been killed here, and a couple and of other people, yeah, had been killed like right behind us where we're sitting. That's um kind of spooky a majority of the dude's tour though was like about executions yeah it, we, we were also told that we could learn about cats and unicorns but uh that he would execute them <laughs> yeah so if you choose that path that probably only leads to sadness <laughs> we've come into the white tower which is one of the main structures yeah. within the tower of london and apparently this was like literally where royalty lived up on the top levels and in the basement there was like a dungeon with a torture chamber and stuff and like it's got a lot of history going on just in this specific building. I mean there's a lot of history in the entire like Tower of London area but this specific building is like packed especially with it. And they turned it into a pretty cool museum that's full of like um, like armory stuff and um, like ponies with armor on them and bodies with armor on them and uh, weapons and things like that. And we've come up to what I think, are we at the top now, do you think? I don't know. We're at a level that is up. <laughs> yeah. And when you walk in, you see this dragon thing. Nobody mentioned a freaking dragon was gonna <laughs> no. be in here. No. <laughs> it is amazing. It's made out of all sorts of armory things. Most of the scales are done with uh, armor. Uh, a lot of it's also done with like the mesh that they would have underneath their armor. The fingers are made of pistols. Even the eyebrows are periscopes. Too cool. The more you look at it, the more you go, okay, I know what that thing is, but I never thought you could put that together to make a dragon that looks this badass. I am truly jealous of whoever got commissioned to do this. Cause somebody went to somebody and said, I want to make a dragon, do it. And then that person took all of this weaponry and made a freaking dragon. <laughs> The museum inside the White Tower is interesting, but 
This was used as a residence for a long time and I don't really have a very good connection as to what it was like to actually have been like a resident of this building and to me that's the part that's like the most interesting that's what I like to learn about. Um, for I instance, to force myself like just to stare at the walls and realize that this is a building mm -hmm. not just like, a museum. Yeah 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 it, it's, a, it's a museum piece in itself and I I kind of wish that I understood a little more about like what that was like like right now we're walking down these stairs and there was something that said that this is was the main stairs to go up and down inside the building since its construction and on the top level the royal family lives so like we're walking downstairs that like royalty had walked up and down and stuff and to me that's amazingly connectable and another moment of connectability they have like a toilet that you can go in and you can see and like that's what the toilet is like I mean it's like mundane in a sense but you can see like what life was actually like in a way and I think that has a lot of value he likes beer <laughs> I'm pretty sure that pony saw your Cheerios. <laughs> <laughs> Run! Tower Bridge! <laughs> Pigeons! <laughs> Did you know I was in here? You can see your phone. <laughs> <laughs> and a very famous master of the mint, Sir Isaac Newton. He was the inventor of that great British invention, gravity. <laughs> Welcome to use it, I'm glad you are. Thank you. It's ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> I think was really cool about today is that we got to go to the Tower of London which was ancient times and now we're gonna get to go to modern era up in the sky garden so from down in the dungeons up to the sky in one day uh, we're right outside the sky garden building and we're gonna go up and we're gonna get to see in the daytime and also fading into the nighttime so hopefully it looks amazing on our way up to the Sky Garden, there was a bit of a line. So we got up here, not during the day, but more like during dusk, the it's, sun it's is going like, down. Like, is it, there's like lukewarm, is this lukewarm day? <laughs> it's a luke day. I would say this is lukewarm. But day. we still have a, it's, you can still get a good grasp of the vastness of London. And having lived in Tokyo for a few years, I'm whenever somebody is like, oh, my city is really big, and then I go there and I see it, I'm like, yeah, I mean, your city's kind of big, but you can see the edges. I'm never really that impressed, but this is impressive. There's no edge here. You've been talking London, today about how London just seems like there's there's a lot going yeah, on. Yeah, it's it is it is huge. And coming from somebody that like, you know, knows Tokyo fairly well, that's I think quite a statement. Yeah. You can't see the edges up here. Like it goes on and on and on and on and on. So like good work London. Good work on being <laughs> like actually huge. And like Katie said, I had been saying, it is. There is a lot to do here and it's kind of overwhelming to be honest. Like we only have a certain amount of time here and it's it's like we want to do a million things and it's hard to find the time to do all of them because it is huge. It's, I know we're not even going to scratch the surface of this place. No. And we've got a gherkin behind us right now. Yeah, a special note about the <laughs> Can gherkin. Can you see the gherkin if I spin? Oh, he's right there. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah there he there's is. The <laughs> um, challenge for any visitors to London. Try to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to the Gherkin. <laughs> and today I'm going to do all that. Uh, this morning when we got to the Le to Tower of London, there I said he was. Good, good morning Gherkin. <laughs> and then today we were at the Tower Bridge and we sat there for a little while at a Starbucks and I said good afternoon Gherkin. And now I'm saying good evening Gherkin. And before I leave here, I'll say good night Gherkin. Can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Something I realized about this Gherkin is that somebody built this thing and I, th I don't know what it's really called, but I think it's named after the guy that like the company or something that built it like Stevens and Thompson Thompson built it. I just see a pickle Some, with arms. Something like that. Like somebody was like okay we're gonna build this giant tower and it's gonna be like this like this icon of the city and like it's gonna my name is gonna be attached to it and it's gonna be my legacy and then everybody <laughs> started calling it a gherkin. Somebody plunked down a lot of chains to just have their name turned into pickle man. <laughs> yeah pickle man. <laughs> 
This might be the most jungle-like observation tower I've ever seen. Because like, <laughs> seriously, they market this place as the highest garden in London. Yeah, okay, I mean, yeah. we're 34, 35, 35th floor. But then there's some stairs that go up, probably get to and a 37. And then you have to also think about the European thing where they they start on ground and not on first. So bump <laughs> exactly it up. Exactly like 38. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of trees up in here and like a forest and some like. Really ambient. Foliage. There is so much foliage. I can't say that word. Whenever I say that word, people make fun of me because I say like foliage or something. Yeah, you fucked it up. I say it wrong every time, so I'm not I'm not allowed to say that word anymore. We got some amb. What levels of ambient lighting have we got here? Is this fondue levels? No, this. Oh, this is nowhere near fondue. What about levels? this pink tree behind yeah, us? Oh gosh, I don't even know what to compare this to. This is slightly <laughs> Broadway ambiance. <laughs> Y'all might not realize this, but Krusty White Roll is my rapper name. <laughs> we've come into the city to go to um, a market, and on the way we've come to a station called Monument Station. And it is kind of like centralized near the London Bridge and stuff, right? Like where we're at. And you can see perhaps behind us is like the ticket gates and stuff where people are coming uh, you know, out of the station. And something that we found that is sort of interesting here that I've never seen in another train station before is if you turn around like this, as you're coming out of the ticket booth, you're able to see into this room here. And that's like the command center for at least a part of the train system. And they've got like security cameras and stuff. And there's quite a few people in there. As you can see, it goes back quite a ways. It's kind of like looking into like a space center like you're gonna, yeah. like they're like they're launching rockets in there or something, but I think they're just like making sure people aren't doing weird stuff on the they're train. Just launching things in the tube. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm assuming that Monument Station is called Monument Station is because right outside of Monument Station is this rather gigantic monument that is a tribute to a fire that took place in 1666 that destroyed two thirds of London, and they actually built this shortly after the fire in the 1600s which I find quite impressive because it is a very big monument. And we also noticed like there's people at the top. So if you pay a few pounds, you can go up there and get a view of, you know, stuff from the top of a very, very tall old monument. Kind of reminds me of um, uh, those towers outside of mosques. What, what are they called? Minarets. A minaret. It's like, it's like, a, it's like an English minaret. It's pretty, it's pretty striking looking. Like yeah. when you walk around the corner it's and it pops out. It's one of my out. favorite things I've seen here. That's yeah, cool. We've been here for about a week now, and every time I walk out of a train station, I'm still super impressed. The way the architecture looks is almost like out of a storybook. Like, how can this possibly actually exist? But there it is, these amazing, super looking old, like, houses and buildings and stuff along the streets with these giant modern skyscrapers just like, hanging behind them. It is a very wonderful looking city and we've been quite impressed at how clean it is and how at least where we've been has felt safe and I think that having like been in Japan for so long we're like always a little worried that when we go outside of Japan we're gonna be places that are dangerous but I don't feel like we're in like any danger here or anything um, maybe that's just because of the neighborhoods we're hanging out in or maybe it's just because the world isn't as dangerous as you tend to assume it is. <laughs> We're walking across. Shit better not fall down. <laughs> We're walking across London Bridge right now, and it's a pretty spectacular view of the amazing Tower Bridge from here. <laughs> <laughs> Inside of the greater city of London, there is a smaller city of London that is actually kind of like an autonomously acting little government section of the UK that behaves sort of like Wales and Scotland and such, but kind of not. And it's sort of like its own little city state, but kind of not. And it's kind of a mysterious little area that is like, a, like the oldest part of the United Kingdom. And it turns into like a story about like Romans and then they built some walls and then some like dudes came to conquer the rest of the UK and they couldn't conquer it so they left these guys be and so like the monarchy that exists like the Queen and stuff that's over the top of the rest of the United Kingdom kind of doesn't have like executive power over this little section of London that is called the City of London 
and it doesn't have very many residents but it has a ton of money and there's all these like conspiracy theories and stuff about the study of london being like the global center of like this like world domination power thing so like there's all this like really weird thing like mysterious little like things about this area going on and the outside borders of the city used to be walls but the walls really aren't mostly there anymore apparently there's like a small section that is but what does remain are these dragon statues and this one is on the south side of the london bridge and they're amazing i, just want, I want to point out i found the dragon yeah you did we were, we were like i mentioned her i was like we want to go so i want to find these dragon statues today was about dragon hunting <laughs> and we were we were on our way to a completely different thing like after we did that thing we were going to start dragon hunting and then we walked by this thing and i was like what what about that dragon? It was <laughs> and it, and surprisingly it was easy. And he's got the coat of arms that the city of London, this, when I say the city of London specific, I'm talking about the smaller area. It's quite confusing. It's not London. London is the big thing. So he's got the same coat of arms that the um, city of London uses and stuff. And I don't know, the whole thing is really mysterious. And the way that I found out about it was all through a um, video by one of my favorite YouTubers, a guy by uh, a channel called C CPG Gray. And he's got a really cool video that if I recall, remember to, I will put a link down in the um, description or in the comments or something so you can check out what exactly I'm talking about by somebody that's a little more educated on the situation. But I just thought it was really cool that like, there it is. There's this like cool little statue that's like- That marks this, this like- Historical, mythological, mythological real thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, all, it's all very cool, very intriguing. I really want to like go down a rabbit hole and learn a little bit more about it, but um, I think if we're going to do that, we're going to do it not in the bitter, bitter wind because right now it is like <laughs> a bit on the cold side standing here by the river. Let the dragon do his duty and take care of things. <laughs> Inside of the tunnel underneath the London Bridge, they kind of have like a bit of a creepy sounding version of the London Bridge's falling down song playing and you're underneath the London Bridge in a tunnel. It's a bit unsettling. <laughs> when I heard about Burroughs Market, I didn't realize that it was a food place. I just thought that it was a market that was going to be selling stuff. And With then snacks or something. Later I read that it, it, it was something about food, but I never imagined what we just walked through. It's pretty amazing. It's a whole bunch of different food stall vendors, and it is a wide variety of different styles of food. There is stuff that you could maybe call English food, but it's kind of rare because most of the stuff is like, there's like a soul food place and there is an Ethiopian place. And they're carving they're, up a pig they're somewhere. They're carving up a pig and there is um, Egyptian food and there's some things that we've had on our travels from like years ago that were like, whoa, I can't believe that's actually here. Yeah, I could not believe there was Egyptian food. Yeah, that shocked and, and me. And that specific dish that they were selling is something that I get really that. liked. <laughs> um, Katie went and got you Ethiopian got Ethiopian. Food. There was a hell of a line there. Yeah. So I think that maybe that might be a good, good sign. I'm going to try the chicken that I got. All right. And they serve these in like a little box and um, they just like, you know, slam in the, the, the meat that you choose that they've got cooking on these huge wok things and it is amazing to walk around and see all the like the bubble and stews and stuff that are going on mm. and they smell really good and all the steam coming off them is really awesome looking and then you get your box and what options did you have veggie chicken beef i went chicken yeah. and with chicken you get two veggies and i asked the dude i was like what's the best veggie and he put some spicy lentils in there thank you dude you rock he didn't even blink no he didn't even blink that one <laughs> And yeah, I was like, please, and he gave me some, and I just had some. It's gonna spice my life up, and it's cold outside, so that's necessary. <laughs> Do, does yours is are the lentils like your like rice or bread base, or is there anything else in there that like? Oh falls yeah, I didn't way? even mention the bread, and that's why I went over there. No. Um, it, when I was in uh, Richmond with my brother, he took me to an Ethiopian restaurant, and I'd never been before, but he taught me about their lovely, lovely bread. It almost looks like a crepe or a pancake it, or it something. It is kind of a crepe, but it's really, really moist, and it's more, not sweet, and it's not based on sweetness. That was really messed up. I worked <laughs> so hard mm. for that. It's kind of like um, a couscous or something style. Yeah, like, like couscous, like pounded Ooh. down together. That's yeah, spicy chicken up on there too. Yeah, I, was, I have a good life ahead of me. That was pretty what fun. What about you? I went ahead and found something that I felt was at least a little bit British, and it is a lamb box. 
and um, they've got some pulled, pulled lamb that they've been stewing and they've thrown some rice and some sauce and a little bit of salad on it. And um, yeah, I, I don't know how I'm gonna eat this right now because I'm holding the camera. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Katie's gonna feed me. Uh, a big slice of pork, uh, lamb. Mmm. And it is, feed myself. it is really wet in a good way. It has a lot of flavor. Ooh, that's damn good. Got kind of a dark flavor. It would be incredible to work near here and get to come over here for lunch Every and like day. try out different foods and stuff because there's a lot of them and they're not that expensive. This was seven pounds, which is, I mean, what is that, like nine Mine bucks or something? Five. Yours was really cheap, right? Yeah. Maybe that's why the line was so long. Yeah, totally. And yeah. Ethiopian food. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're gonna be like in London or whatever, definitely at least hit up this market. Are all the little markets that we keep hearing about the same style of thing? Or of food? I yeah, don't know. I don't um, know. We're trying to go to Camden Market next week, so mm. we'll find out. <laughs> when, no. uh, I'm so, yeah. <laughs> we saw something that we thought would be interesting to try at the market. But because of the temperature outside, we decided we would just buy it and bring it to a coffee shop and eat it. Um, it is goat milk ice cream. And what flavors did you get? I got pineapple raspberry, which is on top, and Earl Grey on the bottom. Interesting. I was glad you got yeah, the Earl Grey. I, I, like, I knew that you would be. I was telling Katie, like, I know what Earl Grey tea is, and I had it like a million times, but I couldn't tell you the essence of that flavor, so I'm interested to see what that's going to be like isolated in the actual ice cream. How is right, the... Let's um, try it together. How is... Oh, okay. So get down on the, get down the on Earl there. Grey. Luckily, it was... Um, so cold outside that the walk didn't really affect the ice cream. Nope. <laughs> Don't touch the raspberry. Don't, ooh, oh, you no. got a little raspberry no. contamination. All right, are you ready? What yep. are we? What are we gonna tap this to? To Earl. To Earl. All right. <laughs> to Earl. It tastes like tea for sure. It tastes like tea and goats. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't taste like goats. Like it does have a little more of a bitter flavor than like regular ice cream. It doesn't taste as sweet. Yeah, I mean, it's that's actually pretty interesting. Um, I'm glad, I'm really glad you chose that one. And the top one you said was, I'm sorry, straw, raspberry? Pineapple and raspberry. Pineapple and raspberry. I think that's what I said earlier. I was eating it's, it, so. It's quite smooth. Mm. I don't know if I can understand like the goat milk part, but it's kind of fun that goats got involved here. Yeah, and he had like a little stuffed animal up there. It was really cute. <laughs> the little, did you see what the logo says? It says, greedy goat, more goat, less guilt. And now I'm wondering if I'm supposed to feel guilty about eating normal, like, milk. Because <laughs> <Like, laughs> goats are upset at you. <laughs> it's like if you, if you want to market something, you just say like, you could be like market like burritos or something and it'd be like, my burritos and then just put radiation free. And like, all the burritos don't have radiation, but like it makes them think like that the competitor has got radiation in their burritos. So I feel like this is like, you know, this is just making me feel guilty about that, something that I really and shouldn't feel guilty a, for. And they got a goat to back it up, so you re it's really sticking it. <laughs> as long as it's not uh, milk from that thing from Star Wars, man. What was <laughs> happening there? Are we differentiating between cocks and chickens or no? <laughs> London is a very clean city and the outside when you're walking around and stuff you very rarely see a lot of trash and there's not a lot of graffiti anywhere and it's a fairly beautiful city in general. But something that we have discovered is that the bathrooms in London are kind of a train wreck. Devastating. Like, like seats are constantly broken, there can be urine and stuff everywhere. It like you just said like it's like when you go into a bathroom here it's like a bomb went off yeah. almost every time. We're talking it, it, to, it, we're talking public bathrooms by the way. Where we were staying it's perfectly where fine. Where we're staying but, is fine. I'm I'm sure that Londoners your toilet seats at home but your, are fantastic. Your, pub, your public but bathroom game is weak. What is going <laughs> on in there? And Katie just busted up in this McDonald's and then what did you tell me when you came out? I am winning the oh my god I can't believe I just saw that. There were blood streaks on the floor. 
<laughs> Seriously. <laughs> this, this, that's more than I've seen in some other places. Is this like, is what public bathrooms are like? or? No, are... no. This is this is this city <laughs> so far. I'm, I'm going to put that out what there. What about in America? I don't really remember. Uh, they're, they're kind of bad sometimes. Oh, I, I, yeah, I mean, we have <laughs> disgusting ones too, but I'd say not like what I just saw. And the recurring situation yeah, it's that like we've every, been having. every bathroom has been rancid. Yeah, so I'm gonna, maybe we'll update this later. Hopefully <laughs> this gets better as time goes on because we've hit the, we've hit the bottom. You think you've hit the bottom. <laughs> That's a really good point. <laughs> Avoid this McDonald's, y'all. <laughs> Last year in January, they did a thing called the Lumiere. I'm probably not saying that right, but it's an event that goes on for about four days where they illuminate tons of places in London. And we're actually standing at one that's a bit more interactive. And people can go up and touch it. And it changes based on where your hand is and I don't really know the rest of it. It's really cool. <laughs> amazing I don't think that it's touch sensitive though I think that there's a camera above the whole square and I think it can see where your hands are based on some sort of like triangulation stuff because it's working through my gloves and I don't think it would do that otherwise I will be honest I was distracted by the illumination so I didn't express as much as I could about this event there are six areas within London that have exhibitions that are happening right now and many exhibitions are happening in each of those locations so we're in one of the areas and it is just explosive with multiple things and it's that like you can all go and see. light type things right yeah they're all illuminations of some sort and we did see a few um by chance last night <laughs> you, you want to cross the road I thought there were, I mean, a whole bunch of people walked <laughs> the light was green what do you okay. want from me wow um so we saw some by chance last night some are duds some are really impressive, like the one that we just saw. I didn't think it was going to be as cool as it was. So we're heading on to some more. Hopefully they're as cool, but I'm hoping for a few duds where we just go, <laughs> why would they do that? <laughs> this one's definitely not a dud. This giant building behind me, they've set up like a projection and you can play Pong on it with a controller that you don't actually touch. You just wave your arm by it. Apparently people are playing Pong on a building and we're gonna do it because that's amazing. I don't know if this building is in any particular importance, but the game is. <laughs> <laughs> the concept of this is really cool and the way it looks is amazing and like the beat and everything and when you when you do it wrong and it gives you like the whole building turns red is all very cool but the controls on it are like kind of sketchy it's what's, just like what's that instrument where you do this oh a theremin a theremin yeah, yeah you just sort of technology. waving your hand in front of a camera and it sort of kind of doesn't really know where your hand is very well mm. and i don't know maybe it's because like and i think if you had time to get a little more used to it personally but you're just being chucked in there so in the, yeah and there's a crowd of people behind yeah. you like waiting to play as well so you don't I, have that I, much time i hit it twice so i was happy with that <laughs> i think i might have hit it once i think yeah. you might have won <laughs> yeah oh, hooray <laughs> This installation is an aquarium inside of a telephone box. Haven't seen any telephone boxes that are usable here and we haven't seen any that aren't kind of creepy. So it's really nice to see a telephone box that looks amazing. And we've noticed that this one is very hard to capture on film or take pictures of. So I would suggest you come and see this next year because it's so far I'm very impressed. Part of the fun is getting to the little light installations and part of the fun is just getting to walk around the city in places you wouldn't normally have gone. How much fun is it to try and stop me before I get run over at every <laughs> intersection? I think that the last time anybody in this video would have seen is when I almost stepped out in front of traffic. Yeah. But, but, yeah. <laughs> but I am more consistently doing that. I'm yeah. sorry to all the people driving here. I'm I've, doing I've, a lot. <laughs> I've, had to, I've had to short stop with you, like, short stop! <laughs> Quite a few times, because otherwise she was going to get plowed over by a bus, upset. a black taxi, a guy on a bicycle. Mm, oh, no, it was like a fleet of bicycles at one point. <laughs> 
but yeah the walk around the city is really cool and I don't know I don't think we'd be out here walking around in the cold right now if we didn't have this objective so mm -hmm. I'm glad that this exists and it's like a reason to get out and see what the city looks like yeah. at nighttime with all the lights and everything because as it is in the day it's a pretty amazing looking city <laughs> that was really good talent. Anywho, um, yeah, so we came to Chinatown. Just I didn't even know that's where we were coming, and then we're walking through the gates looking for our next uh, illumination, and it was it wasn't like it, it's equally as cool as the interactive ones that we got to do because they're actually parading it around and i got a little frustrated because it's like it's not on exactly where the map says it's going to be but it's actually on the move they're doing a little parade that is just flamingos flying in the sky and these people are wearing these contraptions to make them move and enchanting that was really cool it, it really felt like they were there M&M's are alright, but like, <laughs> are they good enough to justify an entire store? No. <laughs> the one thing that's going, that got it going for it though, is that you can smell the chocolate. Can you smell it? When was the last time anyone bought M&M's? <laughs> anyone that isn't like in this store. I'm kind of thinking about getting some. They smell good right now, y'all. Can you smell the chocolate? No, I smell cigarettes. They're like, <laughs> they're like piping chocolate out the out here. It's, it's pretty tasty smelling. That's, that's a smart idea. That's a smart yeah, plan. That's a smart idea. It makes yeah. you want an M&M. Legos is across this street. Does it smell like Legos? <laughs> we found a dud. <laughs> It's like a religious building or something, and on top of it, they have this pink ladder that is super hard to video. And they're kind of saying the description is that it's almost as if it's a stairway or to heaven or an escape portal to whatever, somewhere else other than here. And I mean, I guess the subtlety in it is a little nice. It is, that would be in but... stark contrast to the, what's going on around us for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. This one's not my favorite. And like, we're looking across the street at something that y'all about to see too. Yeah. Let's go check it out. Okay, I think that one's my favorite. What they've built is on a huge open square that they have. It's Trafalgar Square. Is it Trafalgar Square? Yeah. They've taken a bunch of balloons and they put lights inside of them and then hooked them up on a grid and like networked it all together and then synced it with music. So they and like blink and stuff and there's sound scary. effects and stuff are happening. And the whole, the whole thing is really awesome. And the part that I like the most is that there's a gentle breeze out here and that is making them dance. Yeah. So like they have set up this like rigid digital system that's like this is how this has to operate at this particular moment in sync with this music. And then the wind comes and just kind of makes it random. Like it randomizes the motions and stuff mm -hmm. of all the balloons and stuff. And I think that's a really cool harmony that they've come up with. And yeah. it looks really beautiful and you can see it from quite a ways up away. Up close, far away, it yeah. is enchanting. And the balloons are pretty high too. They're like, I don't know, maybe as tall as I am, like two meters or so off the ground. Yeah, there were a couple that were yeah. maybe even taller than you. And yeah. some that were shorter than me. A lot that were shorter than me. <laughs> yeah. Are you bragging? I'm very tall. <laughs> <laughs> the further we get away from the pink ladder, I kind of like it a little bit more. I, I don't think it's one of those things that's supposed to fascinate you while you're standing right next to it. It's something you can see from a distance and it can grab your eye in no way that anything else in the city can because it's gigantic and pink and up in the sky. <laughs> There's no special light up attraction happening where we're standing right now. However, just look. Does it really need anything extra? It's amazing looking. Seriously, rainbows, laser rainbows. But they're not lasers. It looks like what they've done is they've taken string that's like reflective to black lights and then strung it up through this entire park and then shine black lights on it. And they've it. connected it to each tree, which causes your brain to go, yeah, it could just be reflecting off of that <laughs> tree. And it makes no sense, but it feels right. <laughs> and when you're walking up to it from a distance, it looks a bit like just like a ribbon or something floating through this area. Yeah, it's, when it's... I saw it from afar, I was like, no way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, very this one incredible. Is this one's really cool. It's cool how big some of them are, and then, I don't know, I think I'm with you. I think the ladder might be growing on me. Yeah. And you have a different perspective, like when you look at the ladder, and it changes what it was. Mm -hmm. And it's cool that it's just this little thing that's just up there, just on its own, and then some of the other things are like this big ribbon going through this park. Yeah. Wow. When we came to do this illumination hunt, I thought it was going to be like um, projection mapping stuff. 
and we did I, see one last night. We did see one, and that's what we saw, and I think that's what the set that what, 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 at the beginning we were like, it was kind of not that great. Like we said, so we, we were kind of down on it, mm. but we were totally wrong. It is amazing. Yeah. And it's almost, it's it, it's not just like projection mapping for fun to go look at. I think it's art. And yeah, they've a done lot a lot of, of it. it. Some of it's interactive and like you're interacting with an entire building. Mm -hmm. And some of it is like weaving through entire parks. And some of it is those little things that make you like not like it at first and then like it later. Mm -hmm. And this specific one landed us inside of a church. This one's not on the list. It's not even on the list. This what is this? Is this th another this, random this thing is, that's this happening? Is, this is a sneaky one <laughs> trying to get in. But they've got this ball of like clothing that's like kind of shaped like children hanging from the ceiling and I, I don't know why but we're in a church and it's warm in here and we've had a chance to come in here and just kind of look at this and think about what do you think they're doing here why is this happening and it was I don't know this whole experience like of just wandering around the city at night and finding these little mm -hmm. art things was amazing and there's so many of them we couldn't even scratch oh, the no, surface no. Uh, I, we didn't we saw like maybe two percent maybe if that uh, you think it was more 5%? than that? Five percent up and five percent. Oh, we're doing 5%. pretty good. And this runs for what two weeks or something or ten days or four something? Days. Like, oh, four days. Yeah. You would have be hard pressed if you came out in because you only have like from what it's time? Five it's hours a day. Five hours a day. You would be hard pressed to see all of them in those four days. Mm -hmm. You would have to like strategize with the map and like come up with like some taxis or something to make it all work. Yeah, you're really excited about that, aren't you? Yeah. And this seems like something that they do this every year. Yeah. Oh, it's only this is the second year it's happened. Well, they're doing amazing work. Yeah, it's, this I think is it one will the, continue. This for is sure. one of the coolest things I've seen. There's big crowds at everything, and yeah, good work, London. Like, very fun stuff. Mm. The mayor of London commissioned this, so you may want to thank the mayor. I thank the mayor. He's doing good work. What <laughs> anybody in charge of this is like got my uh, got my vote if I ever do have the means. <laughs> Okay, so quick update to what this artwork in this church is. There's a little sign that's over in a dark corner that explains what this is that you see when you're on your way out the door. And it is actually clothes that were discarded by refugees on the island of Lesbos when they had arrived at the island after their, I'm assuming, journey across the Mediterranean in one of those scary little boats that people are dying in. So this is actually pretty hardcore. Um, they have got a pile of clothes as well that you they want you to interact with, like touch and it's from the same place. And I think they're trying to like humanize the refugee situation to people. And uh, that's a fairly interesting way of going about it because it's like you're holding these shoes and this is, you know, this is somebody's real clothes that dealt with a ridiculous situation that is hard to even comprehend. And I think that maybe the, the goal is to try to make that more connectable so that, you know, people can have compassion or whatever for those types of situations, which can be easy to just not be able to connect with. So I kind of I like this. I think this is really cool. And like we said, I don't think this has tied in with the light festival stuff that's going on outside, but I'm certainly glad we found it. We hope you enjoyed this video. We have a bit more footage of London to share before the videos head for the English countryside. Keep an eye out for more Japan videos too. Special thanks to everyone who supports us on Patreon. Without your support, these videos wouldn't exist. If you want to follow us in real time, find us on your favorite social medias.